and welcome back to Talking Lines TV. I'm your host, Michael Short. We have with us tonight Christy Register, and she's here talking about damages and personal injury claims. Hi, hey. Christy. Hey, Michael. Um, personal injury claims, that covers a gamut of, of situations that could happen to someone. It does, it does. Um, personal injury, you know, I think the first thing people think of is auto accidents, uh, dog bite, slip and fall, medical malpractice. Um, so yeah, there, it's, it, personal injury is like a big umbrella that covers all of those injuries that happen to you because somebody else did something wrong. But if it, if it happens at work, then it's workers' compensation issues and yeah. not personal injury. Uh, yeah, yeah. Both? Well, yeah. Workers' compensation is a, is a personal injury, but often if you are injured on the job, uh, going through the workers' compensation system may be your only option. Okay, but for most cases, accidents, so forth, personal injury is going to be the way to go. Uh, you you sue the person who is responsible for the injury. Where in a workers' comp claim, sometimes it's not the employer, but the people who provide services to the employer? Or it could be yourself. You could have done something wrong and that's what caused you to get injured, but under workers comp um, it would be covered. So it's like a faultless system. No matter whose fault it was, if you're on the job, then then it's covered. Okay, but in a regular personal injury claim, claim first and foremost, how are medical bills paid until some resolution is met? Hopefully you have medical insurance. Um, if that is the case, then you get those claims filed and let medical insurance pay for it, or Medicaid or Medicare. Um, now, it may be that if you get paid or reimbursed, you reach a settlement or get a jury verdict, um, that you have to pay those providers back. If it's Medicare or Medicaid, you do have to pay them back. If it's a private insurance company, then that's something that we can work with. Um, maybe not pay back or negotiate to pay back a, a lower amount. What about back pay for lost wages, vacation time, sick days? I mean, I'm sure if, if you've built up six weeks over a period of time working for someone, you're, you're, the way to spend them probably wasn't laid up in a hospital. Right. Um, and that stuff, yeah, you do have a claim for lost wages and for future lost wages if, if that's the case. You just have to prove it. So, I, you know, I get people say, well, I work under the table. Well, that's too bad. You, you've got to be able to prove it either through pay stubs or um, documentation from your employer that shows you use your 40 hours vacation time. Um, so as long as we have the proof, then that that's an element of damages that we try to get reimbursed for the person who was injured. What if you lost your job as a result of your injury? Um, then that would be a factor in, in the claim as well. You just have to prove it now. Is there a dollar amount that goes on to that? No. Um, that would kind of fall under the lost wages damages. And, and what if you're expected at some point in the process, you're going to keep your job, but you're expected to be out of work for a long time of recovery and rehab? Then again, we, we just need proof um, first from the health care providers, you know, your physician did not release you to go back to work. Um, and then we need the proof, and sometimes that could be tax returns or W 2 showing that you make this much per hour, or if you're salaried, you'd make this much per pay period, and you were out X number of pay periods. Do those take into account that, that you, you, know, you may be promoted or you would have done a better job and made more money in the future? I mean, if this happens to a young person, are you pretty much screwed the rest of your life at the salary you made when you were 28? Well, if it's a catastrophic injury, then then that that's something else. But if it's if it's um, say a broken arm where you were out for six months and then after that six month period you're back on the job and you're as as good as new, then then something like that it might be difficult to say. Well, during that six months I would have gotten a promotion. Um, you know, naturally with with damages it's stuff that you have to be pretty sure about and can prove. Yeah. Um, you know, it, in that case, if this person had already been promoted and was scheduled to start the new position and then got in the accident, that'd be easy. But, um, you know, you really can't guess and say, well, it's possible. It's more like you need what was more likely to happen right. than just something that could have happened. Well, I read about a case recently where a surgical intern was in a car accident and he had lost an arm. I mean... That would be pretty easy to prove. He was already on the track to being a surgeon. So, so that's something I think that would be, would be pretty easy to prove. However, if you've got you know, a kid that just got out of high school, the same injury, said, well, he was gonna go be a doctor, uh, that, that might be a little more challenging. You'd still have the injury, the pain and suffering, the medical bills, the permanent damage, 
you just might not be able to get in that um, career. Okay. If you need surgery in the future, medical supplies, ongoing rehab for the rest of your life, how do you account for that when you're looking for a settlement to get paid for what could be 30, 40, 50 years? Uh, if, in cases where serious or catastrophic injuries in, are involved, then um, we may at that point get a life care planner where they look and try to um, predict everything that the person will need for the rest of their life. Say if, if you've got somebody who's been paralyzed, um, then th these life care planners will even look and say, okay, he's 27 right now. Um, the annuity mortality tables show that he's going to live another 40 years. How many new wheelchairs is he going to need in 40 years? You know, how many um, uh, wound care um, providers and, and visits and, and stuff like that. So they really get down and look at every single thing. You know, if it's somebody that has got a permanent um, injury where you need supplies ongoing, um, then they look and try to account for everything. Of course, you have to have um, the health care providers to say, well, yes, it is, we're, you know, it's more likely than not that in six months, 12 months, he'll have to have another surgery. And if you can get that kind of testimony, then, then that is something you can put in for damages. If it's kind of, well, we don't know, maybe, maybe not, that's a little more difficult, but that, that's a job as a lawyer to try to get everything out on the table and, and look at every possibility as to what may happen. And, and that's another reason um, when, when I meet with my clients the first time, I tell them, please be patient. This is not something that you want to rush. Um, y you know, if, if you hear people who they get in an accident, you know, one call, that's all, let's get it settled right now. Six months later, you have to have surgery, too bad. You're on your own. You, you know, once you settle, you're done. So, um, and, and, it, and it's often bad because a lot of times people who are injured or have a child that got injured, um, you, you've got the emotional issues um, with, with an injury and you've got financial issues. Uh, you know, if you were out of work or even if it was your child that got injured, it, but mom had to stay out of work, it, it puts people in a position where they want to settle quickly. Um, but it's really in your best interest, if you've got a significant injury, to wait, you know, let us do a thorough job putting a demand package together and try to be patient and get an A-plus result instead of getting a fast C-plus result. Yeah, how do you put a value on pain and suffering? That is difficult. We get uh, photographs of injuries. Um, all the medical records, all the medical bills, you can get testimony. I've done a video of a client of mine explaining what it was like waking up in that hospital bed with an endotracheal tube and can't talk and hands are tied down. Um, so there are, there are a lot of ways that you can do your best to uh, show the adjuster how bad it really was. Okay, well thank you so much, Christy. If you have questions for Christy about personal injury claims, you can reach her through our website at TalkingLawTV.com or through our toll-free number at 888-2037-LAW. We'll be back with Doug Andrews talking about Phil's sobriety test right after this.